Hello, this is Gata7, and today I'm going to teach you how to replace streamed music in a 3DS, Wii U, or even a Switch game. Now, what you're going to need is Citric Composer, and if your system uses prefetch files, such as the Switch, I don't know if the Wii U does, it might. I'm not completely sure, though. You're also going to need Switch Toolbox. And I'll explain the application in a later, but for now, let's just get started with replacing a stream in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Now of course this is just a random game I chose, it should apply to just about any, but first thing you want to do is open up Citric Composer, then go to Tools, Isabel Sound Editor. Now this is what does the main importing and conversion, so I'm going to import a file real quick, and let's say what I'm going to replace is the oh, main theme or Chijou overworld basically and you can see it has five channels and three tracks if I play the first track it's a generic overworld it's a bit loud for me hang on the second track is the gold ring I believe and this is the leaf beat so it's always in important to notice what tracks are going to be played in your song. Now it's time to get what I want to convert. Now you can actually import say BFSTM, BFWAVE, blah 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 as long as you keep track of loop points and the reason for that is you might have to actually edit the WAV file because I need five channels and if I don't have five channels then that can cause problems. Alright, so I have the WAV file I'm going to be importing. Now, I'm what I'm going to do is open this up in Audacity. Now you want to go to Tools, or sorry, Edit, Preferences. Then you want to go to Import, Export. Make sure Use Advanced Mixing Options is enabled instead of this. So make sure this is enabled and hit OK. This is important. So now I'm going to import my song here. Yeah, you can hear it. Oops. Had the third wrong output. So, now here's the thing. Now normally we would have the gold ring and then the leaf beat, but I'm feeling pretty lazy today. So what I'm go just going to do is add two stereo tracks and then I'm going to add a mono track. So this is going to take the place of the gold rings and this will be the leaf beat. So now what I want to do is hit file, export, export as mp3, and then I'm going to go to here, and I'm just going to export this as theme edited at wave. There we go. Alright, so I'm not going to save the project, and now what I want to do is hit import file. Yep, you want to close the file, and so in my tutorial folder I have my edited theme. Alright, nice. So now, if you were to listen to one of the channels, it would play, of course. Now we want to add three tracks. This one's going to be channels 1 and 2. This one's going to be channels 3 and 4. This one's going to be channel 5. Make sure you hit the update channels after every time. And notice that the channels 2 and 3 are actually silent if I were to play them. That's exactly what we want. Now you can play around with the volume, pants, around pants, around mode, channels, blah blah blah. Actually no, not the channels, you can't play around with that. As that's what we're actually editing. But what we need to take care of now is the loop info, or project info. So you can play around with these markers when you're listening to the song. This is to a start a loop start point, and this is to set a loop end point. But in my original theme, I actually had the loop point set. So in order to view them, I'm just going to get out something that can view embedded loop points, which in this case is this. So I'm just going to 
give it theme that wave. Oh. There we go. Now I'm going to view the loop points. This is the start. Alright. And for the end, it's going to be this. Then you also want to copy and paste these for the original loop start and loop end. And then don't mess with the unknown value. Hit update project info. Then hit illuminate loop static. Now what that eliminate loop static did was it made it so that the loop points were at a pretty multiple that the game likes. So that way we're able to, it will loop properly without the game getting all staticky as that is a problem so make sure you hit illuminate loop static after you saying loop points and if I were to listen to this yep loops correctly so now all I need to do is export it or so you would think but there's one last very very important thing to do and that's the version so if I were to say open up say the one I'm replacing and go into project info you can see the version is 2.1.0 so it's important that I always set the version to what it needs to be 2.1.0 hit update project info alright now we're ready for exporting export binary and then that's I'll just export it out here and it may take a bit but but once it's converted it'll spit it out over here let me just have it so it opens with food bar real quick so we can listen to it all right there we go so now we have a BSS BCSTM that should work in game you'll just import that to how you normally would get custom files in the game I won't cover that in my tutorial but now let's go over what happens if we have something called prefetch files now in more later systems when there's files that have large stream files like this is like 5 megabytes that's not much but what if we had like a 40 or 50 megabyte file in that case we're going to be loading a massive file but we want game audio to play now so how can we load that file when we need to play something that's what we have called stream prefetch files so what they do is they're very very small stream files that give the game something to play the problem is they also set the decoding information for the game so when you're trying to play something that's custom the coefficients won't match up and it'll sound all weird and garbled so in order to prevent that we actually need to edit the BFSTP, BCSTP, whatever is used by the system now New Super Mario Bros 2 does not use one of these but I'm just going to demonstrate how you would make one so in toolbox you see I have a bars file and bars files typically contain these BF STPs. I'm not completely sure which one this was. I think this is for Mario Kart 8. I don't know what system. But anyways, what you would do is you would find the BFSTP you're doing and you would export that tutorial. Can this edit import BF? CSTP? No, it cannot. But that's no matter. So, what you would do is first open up the BFSTP and figure out what the file version is. In this case, it's a, going to be a. Now, when you see FFFE, that means it's Little Endian. And I know this because it's ordered the bigger numbers are over here that's not too important but what's mainly important is that the version of this is right here so see that version how it's 
2.1.0 if you read from right to left that's what we're looking for so now what we want to do is go to stream to prefetch and we convert this 2.1.0 set version and now we do let's say new.bfstp All right, you can see I created the BFSTP. And if we open it up, it's wrong. And you, now you might understand why is it wrong. Well, the thing is, I saved it as a Wii U BFSTP. What you need to do is save it as a Switch BFSTP since it's a little Endian. So what you would do is you open up your stream, set the version, make sure to save as a switch prefetch, hit new, there we go. So now if I look at it, it's the exact same version and byte order, and if I were to right click this and replace it with my new BFSTP, it would play the stream correctly in game. And remember, you only need to do this with ones that have prefetch files again new super mario bros 2 doesn't do this but others like mario kart 8 do for the switch and so does mario maker 2 apparently now i hope you guys enjoyed and that this tutorial was helpful and i'll see you all later